my name is Esther and I'm a knitter, I'm a planner, I'm a reader, and this is my first podcast. I kind of want to show all of the knitting things I've been doing, any books I'm reading, and any stationary things I've done. I plan for this podcast to hopefully be once a month or every two weeks, depending on how much I can get done throughout that time frame. I do work outside of the house and so it's, it's not it's not like I have a lot of time to be doing all these hobbies but yes the first thing I want to go through is any of my finished objects that I finished within this past several months uh, today is March 4th it's around 2 p.m. I am in a spare bedroom in our house that faces southwest and so I have a little bit of indirect light coming from a window on this side. The first thing I want to show would be a pair of fingerless mitts. I finished these in, I believe, January. Uh, they're scrappy. I'm using fingering weight yarn. And I knit them two at a time. So they, they are pretty, pretty matchy, matchy. I, I tried to use up as much scraps as possible, so there's a lot more striping up here and then like less here as I got more into the yarn that I have more of. But yes, I, I love them. I am definitely an accessory knitter over a garment knitter. So scrappy mitts is just the easiest thing to use your scraps for. They're small, so you don't have to worry about like truly running out and it looking like strange so yes I did a tubular cast on I did one by one rib and then I did a three by one rib for the body for the rest of the of the mitts and then I did a gusset increase right where the thumb is so this is my favorite construction for mittens in general it just fits my hands very well I have very petite hands I usually wear like a women's small glove so yes the next finished object that I have is another accessory this is the fantastic by Stephen West let me see if I can show it as best possible this is a very long shawl um, it is longer than my wingspan and I am 5'3 so my wingspan should be around around that measurement and yes this is a fingering weight shawl. I used Fangirl Fibers uh, 31 Day Pokemon Advent for 2023. That, that, that's a mouthful. And I followed the advent as directed. So I did like day one, day two, day three, and so on and so forth. So this pattern is not meant for an advent. That being said, I did... I did have to adapt for to use an advent obviously so I if you are planning on using an advent for the fantastic I used every single color of that 31 day advent and every color past I would say this like light purple color here or maybe this purple purple it's one of these two after that's this one of these two sections, I ran out of almost every single color past that for the main, like the larger sections, not the little stripes. So I got creative and when I ran out, I would either have to find something for my stash that would match it just enough that it wouldn't be too jarring or I would end that section early and then fudge the numbers to make the stitch count work. So it works. I did complete the entire shawl. This is the larger version. If I was to do it again, I would try to get more contrast in my colors because some sections, though, though beautiful, don't get me wrong, it's a beautiful shawl. I think the contrast would have worked being more prominent if I changed my color selection just a little bit. But yes, I, I love this shawl. It is so engaging and I used so much, so much yarn for my stash. 
This took almost 500 grams and it took me 193 days to finish. So yes, it's a very long project, but totally worth it. It is a schlenket. I, I use it to, in our living room. I put it on my reading chair in the evenings and I just drape it over myself and it's just so comfortable. So yes, this is my Fantastic. And then my last most recent finished objects, it's a pair of socks. This is the DRK Everyday Socks by Andrea Mowry. I know this pattern because I, I literally just finished it. This is actually still kind of blocking. Um, I used Cascade Heritage and I just used scraps of what I had. And yeah, these are for my husband. This is a size 5, I believe, in the pattern. And I did 62 rounds for the foot. I did the heel as directed by the pattern, no adjustments. And then the leg, I did 16 rounds and then went straight into a tubular cast off. I do enjoy a tubular cast off on my socks. It gives me enough give, but it doesn't flare. So yeah, these are for my husband. My husband wears a US men's size nine for reference. If I was to knit these again for my husband, I would probably increase the foot length by like like up to 65 row, rows instead of the 62 that I did here. They, they fit him, they fit him actually beautifully, but I just for knowing how I knit, I would probably go up to 65 rounds. But yeah, this is a great sock knitting pattern and it fits great. My husband loves um, ripped socks. He prefers ripped socks over like any other sock that I've made him. So yes, he has preferences. <laughs> okay, so those are my finished objects. And next I will go into whips. Um, how do I want to show this? I have a plethora of whips. Some of them are on scrap yarn, some of them are currently on needles, some of them need fixes. So I think I'll go with accessory knits first, and then I'll go into the garments. So, I have one whip that is not with me, which is I have a muscle burrow hat that is kept in my car. I use it as car knitting. It will probably be in there for several months until I finish that hat. I just didn't bring it in. I forgot about it, to be honest. So, my next accessory knit is a pair of DRK Everyday Socks, again. Um, this is, I just been doing the toe increases, so here they are. Uh, I use double points for my increases for the toes and heels, so. And yeah, uh, this is the yarn from Lavender Loon Yarns, and uh, let me see. And then it's just in the color 200. And yeah, socks. Yeah, I knit a lot of socks. <laughs> My next accessory whip will be this one. So this is on scrap yarn. It is just a muscle bar or it's a Manhattan hat. And I'm knitting this as a Christmas gift. It's on uh, scrap yarn right now. I'm not currently knitting on this, but it'll be done eventually. It's a Christmas gift and it's March. So I'm not that worried about it. It will get done when it gets done. I am a process knitter. So I tend to go with whatever project gives me the most amount of joy, and if that project requires needles sizes that are already on another project, I will put that project on scrap yarn and then continue knitting with the needles that I have. I have an interchangeable needle set, by the way. Um, the next accessory pattern is my Plumpy Shawl by Andrea Maori, and this is a DK weight shawl. I am currently on section two, which is uh, alternating garter color with a uh, two color mosaic or two color brioche. I do love brioche. If you've never knit brioche, I would highly suggest just trying a little, like trying a hat would probably be the best option. Um, the Harlow hat is, I believe, a brioche hat and it just, it's so squishy. It's so rhythmic i am a, i love brioche i prefer brioche over hat fisherman's rig i've learned 
though I, I will do both, but I've, I've just learned my preferences. So yes, this is a bri two color brioche and garter. I'm not currently, this is kind of languishing because it is March and I have no use for a GK weight shawl at the moment, but I will finish it eventually. I, I, I will either finish it or I will frog it. I'm no stranger to frogging. So yes, those are my current accessory nets. Next is up the plethora of garments. Let's see. I'm, let me show those in order of the ones that I'll probably finish first. So this is the No Sweatshirt by Park Williams. It is, I'm knitting it in Noro Kakagori in the colorway 29. And I am currently on the hood. So this is a hoodie pattern. It's in reverse stockinette in which the pattern is ingenious in that you're knitting in the round, but the pearl side ends up being the outside. So I finished the yoke. I have not split for sleeves. Um, I just finished the yoke and then I go up to fit, um, to pick up the collar or the hood in this case, because I find that if I finish the body and the sleeves before I pick up a collar or in this case, the hood, my measurements for the body and the sleeves tend to be off. I tend to have made them either too short because the collar tends to pull up the yoke a little for me. So I, I always knit the collar or the hood before I go to sleeves. So yes, I am currently knitting the hood. The hood is the only place in which it's knit flat. Everything else is knit in the round. I love knitting in the round and I love top down. I, yeah. I, I think most people prefer top down, right? Anyway, so yes, this is going to be my beach sweater, my beach hoodie. I do live in Delaware. So, and so we, my, and my husband, do go to the beach quite often and yeah, I can't wait for this to finish. I think this is going to just be a great summer knit and I can see myself knitting this pattern multiple times with different yarns. Now, I have a few opinions about Nora Kakagori. So this yarn is, let me see, 50% cotton, 30% silk, 10% viscose, and 10% polyamide. It feels like a cotton silk blend yarn in that it doesn't give a lot, have a lot of give compared to wool. That being said, it is very cool to the touch which is what, what you kind of want out of summer knit. Um, the cotton does make it feel a little heavier, but I mean, what, what can you really expect? It, it is cotton. So this is a great summer knit, but I would not go out of my way to get Noro Kakagori again. It puts a lot of strain on my hands. And I don't know if it's the Noro or if it's because of the cotton. I don't typically knit with a lot of cottons, so I, I would like to test that out and try other cotton yarn and just see like what my hands prefer. So yes, that is the no sweatshirt, which I will probably finish probably within this month, maybe next six weeks. The next garment that I will probably finish is the rose cardigan by Andrea Maori. This cardigan is by far the most unique construction. So it is knit in four quadrants. I have finished half, so I finished two quadrants. And I have seamed, it's a seamed cardigan. So I don't really know how to show this. It's so like, it, it's literally half, like half of my body, half. And then I have it on scrap yarn and then I finished this second half and then I connect the two halves together and then I knit the ribbing on the bottom and then the button band. So yeah, this is by far the most interesting pattern or the most interesting construction of a pattern that I have ever had. Uh, there is a beautiful cable that is going down the shoulder. I don't know if you can see it. Hopefully, hopefully you can see it. So yeah, 
And the reason that I'm not following this pattern verbatim is because I am using an Advent fade, fade Advent. This is the Naughty Pines Christmas Advent for 2023. So what I did to try to utilize as much yarn as possible within this faded cardigan is I knit um, the cuff first and then I split into two quadrants, the front and the back quadrants, and then I knit up and then that's that's how I was able to maintain this fade as organically as possible. It's probably not the most, It's I didn't like completely fade in every section, but I think it did pretty well. And I don't mind a little bit of like color blocking. I think it just adds to the uniqueness of my own sweater. So yes, I have finished one half and I am currently on the cuff for the second half. And uh, yeah, this will be done eventually. I hope to get this done before like, well, before spring ends, hopefully. I'm not, I'm not in that big of a hurry, to be honest. So yes, that, that is that cardigan. The next one that is currently on needles is the house blend cardigan. And this is a gift to my mom for Christmas of 2024. So I have plenty of time. Uh, this is also a seamed cardigan. This is the bottom up. And uh, so, but I don't, I don't really mind seaming. I don't like bottom up though, but um, this is for my mom and I will knit her whatever she wants. I'm knitting this in Karen's uh, one pound. I believe it's Karen's one pound. In just a yellow color and this is the back panel my mother is a very petite woman she is smaller than me in almost every dimension <laughs> so so this would be just fine it's probably actually gonna be this is the smallest size and it's probably still gonna be a little big for her but uh, it's a very long cardigan and uh, Karen's one pound is 100% acrylic I am I will knit in 100% acrylic, especially for gifts, because I don't want to impose super strict washing guidelines on for a gift for somebody else. I feel like that's just unnecessary hardship. So yes, I think acrylic has its place, and this is a 100% acrylic sweater that I am knitting for my mom. If my mom wanted a 100% wool sweater, and then she puts it in a washing machine, which I guarantee you she will, I think I might cry just like a little bit on the inside. Okay, mm. the next couple of patterns are fixes. So one of my goals for this year is to fix several of the mistakes that I've made in previous projects. That, uh, yeah, that's just it. I think everyone makes mistakes. So um, these are the mistakes that I've made and the fixes that I plan on doing within mm, than foreseeable future. The first one, which will probably be the possible easiest, is the dustling sweater. This is a knit that I made for my husband. Um, let me see. It is a 100% textured cardigan or textured sweater. And I knit this in uh, Wool of the Andes tweed. Can you see? I don't know if you can see. It's like all over texture. Um, this pattern is by Stephen West, and I believe it's worsted weight. I want to say worsted. So, this pattern, or this sweater, fits my husband beautifully. Like, I picked the right size. I did, I actually don't know if I hit gauge. I think I hit gauge. I don't know. The problem that I have, or that my husband has, is that the sleeves are too long. They are literally like one section too long. I just need to cut out this section, connect the ribbing on both sleeves, and then what I plan on doing with that extra yarn, because I do not like having scraps around, is I plan on making the body just like one section longer. 
he doesn't need the body longer. It's just for peace of my mind, really. And so, yeah, this should be a relatively easy fix. This should be like maybe a weekend off or like a four day vacation, four day weekend project that I can finish. I'm in no hurry to finish this because it is March and this is a worsted weight wool sweater. My husband is not going to wear it until maybe September, October. So no rush, but I do know that this is probably be the fix, the fastest fix simply because it is worsted weight and yeah, I'm not going to be making a lot of adjustments. So that is the desk mood. Um, my husband says that this sweater fits beautifully. I have worn it, but obviously this is not my size, so I can't really speak to the fit. But my husband says it fits him beautifully. Uh, my husband's on this, like, the slimmer side. Like, he likes slimmer fit clothing than I do. And it, it matches his vibes. It matches his vibes. That's it. So, yes, that's the dustland. Um, the next one that will probably be the next easiest is my Amadou cardigan. So, <sighs> this one's a little heartbreaking. This is a, this is a all over cable cardigan. I did not put, finish, I did not do the sleeves yet. They are on scrap yarn. And the reason why I have not done the scrap them is because I want to extend the ribbing on the body. How do I show this? So, it looks like this. I can't see what you're seeing. And I need to extend the ribbing. I Well, I want to extend the ribbing. But in order to extend the ribbing on the bottom, I need to rip out my button band. And the button band is 100% double knit button band and it breaks my heart a little to rip up double knitting it's it's just it was so much work and it was it's so beautifully constructed like the button band has no problems it's like lying flat it's like I even have the I even have stitch markers on where I want to put the buttons and like they match the buttonholes like everything is works it's just I want the body ribbing to be longer and this is where my dilemma is I don't want to rip out the double knitting but if I want the ribbing to be longer I have to I don't need the ribbing to be longer the body of the cardigan actually fits me quite well um the the cardigan stops at like a little past my natural waist like a little past my belly button and the ribbing hits like just above my my hip joint I'm a very petite woman so it's it I don't really know how else to describe it so I don't need to I don't need to extend the ribbing but I want to and I know if I am going to rip it out it is better to rip it out now than later and as I said before I don't like putting on sleeves before I do a button band or a collar or a hood or what have you so I need to make that decision and I need to make it sooner rather than later if I want to finish this card again anytime at any time so yes it, hurt, it hurts my soul just a little bit but I I think I am pretty set on ripping out the button band to extend the call to extend the ripping I just it's a little sad Ugh, just like like look at the cables like I think that that cabling is just so beautiful. I really would love this cable cardigan. <sighs> I just need to make that decision. I just need to make that decision sooner rather than later. So yeah. <sighs> so sad. Um, this yarn is Knit Picks Wool of the Andes in Sport, by the way. Uh, I think it's... Wool of the Andes shows textures really well for like how affordable the wool is. It's, I'm, I have no wool sensitivity. I know it can be a little scratchy for some, but I, I have no issues with it. Plus it's a cardigan, so I'll be wearing something underneath. Anyway, yeah, I have no problems. I just need to, I, I need to rip off that band-aid. So yeah, that is the Amadou cardigan. And then my last two are ones that, well, they're not difficult. I just need to do it. This is all just like ripping off band-aids over here. 
Um, this is my Wool and Honey by Andrea Mowry. You can tell that I like certain designers. I like Stephen West. I like Andrea Mowry. It's not that I have like any loyalty towards them, I guess. I just love their patterns and their writing is just so concise. So this is my Wool, of, Wool and Honey by Andrea Mowry. Uh, this is knit in Knit Picks palette in Autumn Heather, I believe. This is a woolly wool sweater. But this is a beautiful sweater for like spring evenings when it's still chilly out. Especially when you're like close to the beach. It's it gets chilly at night. So this is a great little sweater. Everything works. Except I need to extend the sleeves by just like an inch longer. And I would be happy. Essentially this is a lesson to me to stop finish stop casting off early because that can be the problem so yeah I just need to knit the sleeves just like an inch longer and it shouldn't be that big of a deal it should be pretty simple I just I just need to get get it done so yeah I need to do that on both sleeves I have extra yarn for this so that shouldn't I don't have to wait for it I just need to get it done so that is the wool and honey the wool and honey pattern it's a great pattern and I love this sweater. It goes with almost anything that goes in my, that's in my wardrobe. Like I've worn this with shorts, with jeans, over sweaters, with skirts, like this, this sweater and the style of it, like the slightly more boxy oversized fit of it works beautifully in my closet. But if you're planning on knitting it, I would read the project pages because the sizing can be very difficult to get. I don't even remember what size I knit. The medium size? Maybe the larger size? I do remember that I knit, a, I think either the middle, medium or the large, and I wrote, and I thought later after I finished this, that for my next one, I would want to knit one size smaller. So, I don't even know if that was a full sentence. <laughs> anyway. And then the last fix that I want to do is another Andrew Mowry pattern. This is the tessellated vest. This is a complete beginner's mistake. So this is my first ever top-down garment that I've ever finished. And I, I made a very beginner mistake in which I did not think about how I was going to wear the garment before I finished it. So I measured from my shoulder to my armpit, right? Just like any other measurement. And I forgot to factor in the fact that I would be wearing this vest over something else. So I'd wear it like over a shirt or a, a dress. I would wear it over something that most likely already has sleeves, which means that I needed to make the armhole longer to accommodate for whatever thing I'm wearing underneath and I did not so this is a complete my beginners problem the issue that I have there are several one is I'm gonna need to rip out all the ribbing and I'll need to rip out the I think this is a three needle bind off at the very top so right up at the very top at the shoulders I need to do that hopefully by preserving as much yarn as possible not that I don't have enough it's just I, I want to preserve as much as possible because this is knit in almost just one skein of that color and though I have other skeins they're not the same dye lot so it I, I want to try to preserve it as much as possible the next thing is that this color changing yarn is spin cycle yarn and though I knit this several months ago so I don't actually remember the reason I think the reason why I bound off early is because I wanted the tops of the shoulders to be as like seamless as possible with that color change in which I was able to accomplish that pretty well if you can see like that color change in that shoulder is pretty like consistent so when I rip this out, I want to try to keep the color changing as consistent as possible. I would 
it's not necessity. I know it's not, but in my head, I want to try to conserve that or like preserve it as much as possible. So I need to figure out a way to rip back without a doubt. I need to rip back and find out where that color change was, where I split the yarn to try to make it match up as much as possible. So this is going to take some, some thinking. And also it's just it's so beautiful. And it's like, it's mosaic and I love mosaic color work. And it just, it breaks my heart a little to break some, to like rip back something so beautiful. But I know I have to, and I know I'll be happier if I do. This is the back, by the way. And this is the back. And so it's just, oh, it's so beautiful. So yeah, I know I need to, I just need to, invest a good amount of time to, to be thinking through that this is not a fix that i can finish in like a four-day weekend the other fixes i can do within a i can start within a weekend this one is going to take me some time <sighs> but yeah um that is all of my whips or future fixes and then i have one future cast on which i really shouldn't do but what can I say? I'm a process knitter and I will do what brings me joy. And my my planned next cast on is the Camellia sweater, which is a stranded color work sweater, a knit top down, and I believe it's a raglan style sweater. It does incorporate three colors and I have my three colors picked. So this is the main color. I have Kelborn Woolen Scout and navy heather uh this is a dk weight yarn i i've used couple and woolens before i think it's a great yarn it's pretty affordable and i can get it almost anywhere so that's convenient for me uh the next one i have is colonette yarns in the color sahara which is this one it's just like a fair it's like a stripy orangey tan and then the last one is a Knit Pick Spare Yarn in Sport that I just dyed at home with some green that I had. And so, yeah. So these are the three colors for my three color stranded uh, sweater. And I think these colors will work out very well together. This is a color palette that I've used before. I just gravitate towards like blues and oranges with like a pop of something, like something else. So yes, these are my three colors. And I think I'm going to love this sweater. It is going to be a very warm sweater. Uh, the sweater calls for sport. I'm using DK. I'm not too worried about hitting gauge. I don't really do gauge swatches, but I've never had a problem with not hitting gauge. I think I'm a very like average tension knitter. I don't know. But yeah, I've never had a problem with hitting gauge. I probably will do a gauge swatch for that though simply because it is stranded color work and though i have knit color work sweaters before i do find that my color burp tension um is very it's just variable it just changes a lot oh i do have a swatch for the um for the amadou cardigan though i did do a swatch for the cables <laughs> so i do i do know i do swatch it's just I swatch for specific techniques. I swatch for cables and I swatch for color work. Everything else I don't. And I don't, I I should apologize for it, but I'm not going to, because that's just who I am. Okay, so that is all the yarny things. Um, and I do not have any yarn acquisitions. I'm trying to do a yarn, like, controlled by, so. I don't have any yarny acquisitions of any kind, no notions, no project bags, nothing. So uh, let me get into stationery in my book that I'm reading. So I'm currently reading Lolita. I am renting this from the library. Uh, this is a very classic novel and how do I say this? I haven't finished it. I'm still on part one. And the main character is a terrible person. <laughs> like, I don't really know how else to describe it. He's not, 
she's a terrible person. But yet, the book is written beautifully. I can see why it's a classic. I can see why it's on, like, a book that you should read within your lifetime list. But the main character, like, sometimes I just want to... Mm. Ugh. But anyway, it is a great book. I... I hesitate to recommend it only because the the topic is so yeah you, you just gotta you gotta know what you're reading I think I would suggest like reading the back cover or like reading there is a forward in here I would read the forward before you like go into reading it I think it's just so that you know what you're getting into I think but it, it is a beautiful book. It is a beautiful read. I don't know if I'll ever read it again, though, after I finish it. Like, there are some books that you, you reread over and over, right? And that's not one of them. <laughs> and the last topic that I have to discuss with you is the planner that I'm using. So I am a planner girl. I, I am... I love all forms of stationery. I use the scrapbook. Um, I write pen pal letters. I journal. I I did scrap journaling. I did like junk journaling for a while. So I am I'm definitely a stationary lover. And so the planner that I'm currently using is my standard TN. This is the Chic Sparrow uh, Mr. Darcy leather in the Mr. Wickham colorway. And this is the back. This is the front. It is the old style pockets. And I believe it's an old style pen loop too. I don't believe Chic Sparrow has this anymore. I haven't been on their website for a very long time. I have been on a pretty consistent stationary no buy for a, the past like three years. So I I honestly don't really know. I should, probably should research that before I started writing talking about this. But anyway, too late now. Um. So let me see if I can show it to you. So the back has a secretarial pocket like such. And the front has uh, just card pockets like such. And this was considered the old deluxe style. I have four inserts in here. Um, I have my planner, which is a month on two pages with a week on one page that I, I have an old insert from. I think it's from Michael's, in which I'm just trying to use up what I have. Um, I have a, a habit tracker from 1407 Planners. I have a journal which is just a blank um, blank notebook journal and then I have a checkbook register and the checkbook register is just what you would use a checkbook register for. Um, in the pockets, let me see if I can show this to you, ah, in the pockets I have stamps, uh, washi tape, um, family photos really and then in the pocket I just have some journaling cards and like my yearly overview. And in the back, I have a pencil board, which I, I use more outside of my planner than in my planner. It's really nice as like a hard surface whenever you're writing something out in the world. And then I have a, just like one of those Ikea paper rulers that I have just on my pencil board right here. On the outside, I keep, I keep a stitch marker. Because I, I lose these when I'm knitting out and about. I just, and I need one. It's convenient to just keep one on my planner. I have a pen. This is the Papermate Ink Joy 0.7 in black, and I keep it in the pen loop. And then I have a clip, just the Traveler's Notebook clip. Yeah, the Traveler's Company um, plain clip. And so, yeah, that's my stationery um, planner of the month my book of the month and all my knitting things uh if you have any questions i guess feel free uh i will link my ravelry project page down below so if you have any questions at all about it um i would check that first and i usually link the pattern that i'm knitting within that project page so yeah i can't really think of anything else to say um I, I hope you have a nice day. 
and I I hope spring is coming for you guys because I'm so excited for summertime. So yeah, uh, see you next time. Bye.